Corporate finance, practice problem in one note. Present value calculation where we have uneven payments. Don't leave profit solely to chance. Instead, use corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote and would like to follow along, you're not required to, but if you would like to, we're going to go into this item up top. We're in the practice problem section in the 927 tab, the present value uneven payments. Also note that if you are using OneNote, check out the resource for the immersive reader. Oftentimes we'll have a matching set of presentations down here in the text files with the same numbers, which will provide the transcript information, transcript information that can then be read audibly, or they can be converted to other different languages and either read or listened to in other different languages as a complement to what we have up top here. So I'm going to close this back out. Our information is going to be up top. We're then going to calculate this a few different ways. One's going to be with a standard mathematical type of calculation with a formula, in other words. Then we'll break the annuity uh, down into the present value of one type of calculations. And then we'll also calculate it with a uh, table type of format as well and possibly an Excel equation to consider how that would be done as well. So scrolling then back up top, we have a bit more complex of a scenario. It's a present value type of situation. We're going to be receiving uh, 1,900,000, we are imagining, over the years of 30 years. And the percent is going to be 12%. But there's also like a balloon payment at the end of this uh, series of payments. And that's for the 1,500. That breaks the uniformity so that breaks the ability to use simply one formula, an annuity type of formula, present value of an annuity, uh, with this balloon payment. So we have to break this down in some way to different types of chunks so we can calculate. Now, because this item here has one basic balloon payment at the end of this, then the most logical way to think about it would be say, hey, maybe I'll use an annuity for this first half of the 30 years, and then I'll have to use basically the present value of one calculation for this last component the balloon payment that's how we'll calculate it first note that if it was different if it's different type of complexity then again you can typically use the present value of an annuity and present value of one calculations in order to break it out we will take a look at breaking the annuity out into a present value of one calculation as well 30 of them and adding them together tedious thing to do if you don't have excel but if you have excel something that can be done as well as useful to basically see it in that format because once seen you can see how you can break out any type of these problems into that combination even if they're going to be more complex in a fairly easy way with the help and use of spreadsheets and formulas so if we then uh, pick this up we're going to say we can imagine this being like another kind of prize situation where they might say if i was to take these payments one nine zero 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 times thirty that would be 57 uh, million, right? And then we would add the balloon payment of the 1500000. And so then we'd have the 58500. Again, it'll be an amazing prize to win. But again, on the small print, it's a little bit different. We're saying, hey, but we're not getting that today. So although it's still amazing, it's still a little bit possibly less than you would think, given the fact that if you got that money all today, it would typically be worth more here we're saying you're not going to get it for 30 years at this amount per year and then you have the balloon payment basically at the end which is a way to really drastically that balloon payment is really a way to drastically reduce the present value of something because that portion you wouldn't get for the 30 years so again still would be obviously amazing if you were to receive that but the the advertising or the the idea that it's worth 58 five today in today's dollars would be kind of a little bit uh, deceiving now you can also think of this as a scenario in terms of well how much money could i put in basically today for example if i wanted to get money back uh, how much of a lump sum present value would i have to put in to get you know basically one million nine for a certain amount of, out of time and possibly then have one million five hundred at the end maybe as like a like, maybe as like a, a cushion in case, you know, if you were doing like a life expectancy type of thing, in case I live longer, you know, than I thought or something like that, that would be a similar type of scenario, different scenarios you can think of. I, I think the easiest one for us to visualize is the kind of a prize type of scenario in here. So let's go ahead and do this first with our mathematical formulas. We're going to start with a present value of an annuity for this top portion, and then we'll calculate the balloon payment 
with a present value of 1. So the formula is going to be P times 1 minus 1 plus R to the negative N over R. We'll do that and break that formula out into basically a table type of format. We want in the outer column P times this whole thing. And then in the inner columns, we'll break out this numerator in a bit more detail. So there's the 1 million 9. Then we're going to take the 1 plus uh, R to the negative N. We're going to bring out this 1. I'm pulling this out to the inner column here. And then I'm going to pick up this 1 plus R to the negative N. So we'll pick up the 1 plus the rate, which is 12%. That's going to give us 112%. Remember, be careful of the decimals. That would be 1 as in 1 plus the 0.12. And that's going to be 1.12 or 112%. We take that to the power of 30 or negative 30 which we would need a separate calculator, such as a financial calculator. You can find that on your Windows calculator, but with a scientific calculator, like so. And then we'll take that 1.12 to the power of, and then we're going to say 30, and make it a negative with this little item there, negative 30, and that equals about, and pulling this down, about the point. Uh, 0, 3, 3, 3, 7, 9, and so on, and the so forth. Then we're going we're gonna to take this. Now we're here. Now we took the 1 plus R to the negative 1. We're going to subtract 1 minus it. I'm going to take it minus 1, which will make it a negative, even though it shouldn't be negative, but I don't want to retype in that long number. So I'm going to say minus 1, and there's the 0. 0.99 or 966622 about. So we're going to take that then. And then we're going to take the 12%. This number is now the numerator. The denominator is simply the, the rate or 12%. So I'm going to take that, even though it's negative, it's not going to bother me. I'm going to take that, divide it by the 0.12, 12%. Now we're at the 8.05518 and so on and the so forth. We're going to bring that into the outer column here. And now we're left with just P times this whole thing, which is broken down to one number. So I'll take that number, even though it's negative, and say times the 1900000, and that's going to give us our 15304849.54 about. I'm going to break this back into a normal calculator here, the standard calculator. And so there we have it. So we've, bro we've taken that series of payments, which that in and of itself would be, if it was just the payments, 1900000 times 30, and if we present value it, because it's a series of payment, we're bringing it down to here using the rate or discount rate of the 12%. Now we have to account for the second half of this, which is going to be that balloon payment, which you're going to get at the end of the 30-year uh, period. We've got to bring that all the way back. It's, now it's a present value of one calculation. Formula being present value equals the future value, which is now going to be that 1,5 uh, 1, times 1 over 1 plus R to the N. R is going to be the 12% N. 30. So let's go ahead and do that in our little table format. We're going to take the 1 million 5, which is basically like uh, the numerator here. Then we're breaking out then the 1 plus R to the N. There's 1. There's the R 12%. That gives us 112% to the power of 30. I won't do the calculation again, but be careful of the decimals and percentages and make sure you've got a calculator that you can take to the power of 30 or use Excel. And that'll give us the 29.9599 and so on or so forth. And then we're going to take the numerator divided by the denominator, which will be the 1.5 divided by the 29.9599 and so on, gives us about the 50,066.89. If we were to take that number divided by the 1,005, this is the amount we would expect to see on, say, a table format that we can take a look at and we'll see later. Now, if we add those two up then, meaning we're adding up the amount from the annuity, plus the amount from the single lump sum at the end, that gives us our 15, 354, 9, 16, 42 present valued. So that's going to be the first way we can, we can do this. We can also think about this and say, hey, why don't I break this whole thing down then into the present value of one calculations, and we'll have 30 of them plus the balloon payment, 31, for that balloon payment at the end. So this is another way that you could basically uh, see this. Note that any annuity we have, we could break down to present value of one calculations and, and or some combination of an annuity and a present value of, of one. So if we did this, we could say, okay, this annuity, for example, period one, we're imagining we get this one nine like a year out. 
if I present value it, I won't do the calculation for it, but I imagine doing it in say Excel, and we do do this in Excel, then you can easily kind of do this calculation and bring this back, uh, pulling the period of one period as opposed to 30 periods, because we're just talking about that first payment, which would present value it down to this one six nine six four two eight uh, fifty seven. If I took the second payment, then we would do the present value of one this time taking the number of periods to be two as opposed to one or 30 because we're just thinking about the second payment the present value then although the payment being the same will be less because it's two years out and therefore less in terms of the current value then if we add this number and that number we get to this number and then if we take a look at the third payment once again the 1,900,000 in period three if we present value it back out then using the same formula differentiating between the number of periods this being three periods as opposed to two one or 30 we got a present value which will of course be lower than the prior two uh, present values because it's few further into the future if i take the value before this the three million two one one oh nine six point nine four plus the current present value one million three fifty two three eighty two we get the current value four five six three four seven nine and so on and so forth we do this all the way through to the 30 payments. Tedious to do if we did this by hand, but in Excel, you can just use the autofill feature to populate this table quickly, and you can get a lot more detail in terms of what is actually happening. You can see the value of the payments decreasing over time. And then at the end, we'd also have to tack on this last payment, the balloon payment of the 1,500,000 at period 30, doing another present value of one calculation and taking the, the number of units or, or the number of periods to be 30, which would bring that down to this 50,067, adding that up to the prior balance we had from the basically annuity we broke down into present value of ones being now 15,354,916,42, that then matching what we got up top, 15,341,916,42, and so on. So that's another way we can do it. This would be a tedious way to do it for this 30 year annuity. And obviously we could do a similar kind of combination and annuity and a present value of one. If we did this with an Excel and broke it down to its easiest formulas in Excel or using a financial calculator, then of course we would simply do the financial calculator calculation for the 30 year annuity and then one for the present value of one and simply add those two together. So we could break this down into basically two formula type calculations if we did this in excel the first one would be the present value of an annuity this is a good example of the difference between the present value of an annuity and present value of one in excel those two using basically the same functions but having a difference between the payment and the future value so this one for example would be the present value of the rate which would be the 12 percent comma the number of periods which would be 30 comma and then the payment which would be used because this is going to be an annuity of the 1,900,000. That would then give us the 15,304,849,54. Then if we took the present value of the last payment, this balloon payment, that would be present value of the rate, which once again would be 12, comma, the number of periods would be uh, 30 here because this one was paid all the way out at the end. And then we have two commas, or you can put a zero here because there is no payment here because we're not using an annuity. We're simply, we're simply bringing back the present value of one. And therefore we will then use the present value or future value, I should say, which is gonna be that 1,500,000, which we're pulling back to the present, which gives us then that 50,000, adding these two together, once again, gets us in a much quicker and simple way to the answer of 15,354,916,42. Then if we were to do this with the tables, same kind of thing with the tables. We do the annuity calculation and then the present value of one for the balloon payment, but with the tables. So the annuity would be here. It's just got to make sure you pick up the proper table now. Annuity table versus present value of one. We got the 1,900,000 looking on the table for 30 years, 12%, 12%, 30 years. So here's the present value of one, 12%, 30 years is way down here at the eight. 0.0552 so there's the 8.0552 that gives us the 15304880 slightly different than what we saw up above most likely due to the fact that it's going to be rounded out to four digits 
Then the present value of one, we're picking up that 1,500,000 30 years out. We're looking for the table, picking up the proper table, which is now present value of one, which is going to be at 30 and 12 again. So we're looking down here, present value of one, which is down here, 12%, 30 years is going to be here. It's going to be the 0 .3, 0 0.0334. So 0 0.0334, multiplying that out gives us the 50,100, about what we got before, but slightly different due to rounding because the tables take this out to solely four digits. Then if we add up the 15,304,880 plus the 50,100, we get the 15,354,980, which is, is close to what we had up top, 15,354,916,42. It is going to be different due to the rounding we had with these two calculations using the two tables, taking it out only to four digits. Note that since we have a very larger, a larger dollar amount here, those differences could be larger in terms of total dollar amount differences, still most likely in material for normal decision making purposes, but something that could be utilized for test questions, for multiple choice type questions, for example, to distinguish the method that you will be using. So be careful with test questions. They might tell you, I want you to round it to a certain area. They might tell you, I want you to use a table and then put answers that look to be materially the same for decision-making purposes, but distinct enough to, to differentiate what answer you would get depending on the method you used to get it.